Buckle up and get ready to hate the USA. Welcome back, Mere Mortalites, with another edition of the Mere Mortals Book Reviews, where we look to dissect the books all around us and get out the insights for you to take away and perhaps read from. And today I have Rogue State by William Blum, a guide to the world's only superpower. And as I said, it might make you think twice or think a little bit differently around how you might see the USA or in general at a story. So before I actually get into the book itself, I'm going to go into who William Blum is because it might give you a bit of an idea where this book comes from. Um, and I think it, it did help me to understand firstly who the author was. So William, um, he's always been a very big critic uh, of um, USA's foreign policy uh, as far back as writing uh, exposés on the CIA backed to the 1969. So since 1969, he has been a critic. He has been trying to expose the, I guess, let's just say the, the terrible things, the bad things, the gray things that the USA, especially the CIA or their foreign um, defense have done uh, to other countries, with other countries. Um, that gives you a bit of an insight, I guess, where this book might be leading in from. Um, but the book itself, Rogue State, is essentially a, a dissection, I would say, and a summarization of the terrible things that the US have done to other countries in particular. The way that it tries to do, do that, and this was actually published in 2000 originally, um, edited a couple of times from that. Obviously, it includes some of the information and the atrocities that happened in 2001 and September 11, uh, all the way to 2005. He kept on editing this particular book and this copy is obviously of the latest one. And what this book tries to do, and it does so in, uh, in an okay way, I'm going to say, is that it goes across, and I'm going to read out a couple of the sections. It'll talk about... Um, Assassinations, torture, the unsavories, training new unsavories, war criminals, haven for terrorists, support plot, depleted uranium, cluster bombs, uh, encouraging the use of uh, chemical warfare, kidnapping, right, you get the picture. So a lot of these things where we, uh, in everyday life and everyday media, we might think as, oh, that's what the terrorists, that's what the bad people do, right? And this book goes through and actually shines a light into, yes, that is what terrible people and evil people have done in the past in other states. However, uh, looking and putting the lens back on, I guess, the superpower that is, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of examples where the USA have actually done very heaps of these atrocities themselves and they haven't actually been kept in, in the heat of it in terms of, you know, just because they do something bad, no one's actually going to reprimand them in comparison to how other places might do actually something like those atrocities, like use chemical warfare, um, like kidnap people, and then be severely punished for it. And the book tries to break down just why, as a superpower, it is so bad, I guess, for the USA to be doing all these things. What I didn't feel, what I didn't feel like it did enough though, however, because for me, what it, this, this book struck to me it was, yes, Here's the other side of the story. So here's when you actually shine the, the lens back on, on the country as a USA and all the terrible things that it does. But it almost did it to an extreme, to the point of it was just laying out, here's the facts as to when uh, USA bombed Yugoslavia for X amount of days. Here's the examples of when they kidnapped people, when they used drugs incorrectly, and they did all these things. And you go, yes, that is absolutely true. And so the book does really well in, in actually displaying that, where I felt like it actually probably didn't go down that that path or went too down that path is just as equivalently, we might look at a particular story or flow and to say, oh yes, this happened and you know this evil person did this. You miss sometimes the, the backstory as to why that eventuated. And I feel like you get a little bit of the same feeling here where you go, okay, yes, I can see the facts. I can see the facts that yes, the USA went in and did this or they bombed a particular place for X amount of days. Um, and I guess the, the argument that was made in this book was, you know, terrorism you know, really wasn't a thing many, many, many years ago. Um, and in fact, because as a superpower, the US was going around and doing all of these evil stuff around different places, it then caused people to have angst, to have hatred for the USA in a particular way, and then create this terrorist view that they want to hit back at the USA. Totally granted, understandable, but if we we're to look at that same concept or the same sort of uh, conversation back to the USA as to why did they go and do that? I feel like this book 
clearly paints a picture that it's, yeah, it's pure evil or pure hatred and there wasn't anything else that was causing it. And while that might be right in a fraction of the cases, I don't believe that it is in all the cases. Again, I could be wrong, but this book does not look at it in the, the gray in the opposite scale. It actually looks at it as black and white. These are terrible things. And so because of that, I'm just going to put a big white brush and these are the... Uh, it's terrible. All up, terrible superpower. Um, they should be held accountable and ev- everything they must be doing must be terrible. Um, where I kind of agree in part where, yes, they should be held accountable for all of these things uh, as a superpower, but then playing it out on the other side or trying to see different chain events. Um, if they hadn't done some things that they actually had done, would it, we have landed at a worse spot? This book doesn't doesn't try to uh, articulate or have that that conversation. It just tries to put forward here are the facts and paints them in that extreme view of everything must be bad. And for me, the the biggest takeaway really from the book Rogue State was the fact that talking about the truth without any emotion can be very powerful by the individual that it is read by. Um, so what I, I guess my, so here's my example of, of reading through this book um, in the very first few pages I was gave the first 50 pages of this book I was really challenged with the fact that it was presenting all of this truth um, that goes maybe against the traditional media and the usual convention of story that gets told to the point of oh wow that actually did happen oh wow that actually did happen so all these all these truth and it is look it is completely backed up there's a lot of referencing so this book does that really really well but putting together such a facts laid out without the emotion or maybe the understanding of yes there is gray on both sides of things and how it might have eventuated it just forms this this, this book where you kind of take it away and go Yes, I believe that this um, being the superpower that's not held accountable is absolutely atrocious. It's the most terrible thing. And this book will just feed that and you'll be like, yes, this is absolutely fantastic. Or you'll get this extreme overreaction where you go, oh, look at all this. Um, this is just trying to paint like uh, a really bad picture of the USA. I'm not going to read about this because it's not you know, thinking about why it actually caused it in the first place. So yeah, perhaps a really patriotic uh, individual in the USA or someone who served, they might read this book and go, oh, This is garbage because it's not looking at the other space. So I actually think that either way, it kind of takes away from maybe how good the book could have been. Because if it, you know, if William had actually decided to present the facts and then also cater to the fact that yes, there are those two spectrums and try to bring together maybe some of the reasoning as to why that had eventuated, perhaps why nobody had succeeded in uh, being able to pin the superpower down because there's a lot of stories um, in this book that actually displays that you know people were trying to take them to court, essentially the international court for doing X, Y, Z. Um, I think that one of the um, coolest thing I think I, I did read was the, the fact that the US had essentially uh, pledged that they were going to give back some money to Vietnam after the uh, Vietnam War, um, and in, instead they didn't. They not only did not give back some money, they also um, Vietnam actually had to ended up paying uh, the US. Now I do know that there's other things that the US have done to try and help out Vietnam in terms of cleaning up. Um, but again, this book to me, the way I read it, I went, oh, it's just presenting the facts of, oh yes, that didn't happen, like that payment didn't happen, and Vietnam had to pay them back. Yes, the US did other things to try and support. However, it's not like every single fact is in this book. And so again, for me, I go, yes, I get that you try to present the facts, William, in the absolute set of the hour, which is great. But I feel like you're going to have two parties who are going to read this book in very different ways and take it away in very extreme polarities. Uh, and for me, because I kind of fell, and I normally fall with books, I want to see all of the story, all of the pictures, so I can put it together and go, okay, cool. If I'm dissecting this down, I can see this one viewpoint and this second viewpoint. I went, yeah, this is one of the most one-sided viewpoints I've, I've ever seen. Good in the sense that it gets you to see that viewpoint and perhaps a lot of people um, if you're just consuming normal media or normal books, you probably don't know a lot of these things that the US actually have done. So it's obviously good to have in mind. But as a way of, um, I mean, the way that I wanted to absorb that information and see it in the full point, I didn't get the most of it. Um, probably the last thing as well that I wanted to say about this book was Rogue State uh, itself actually became really publicly um, sort of wanted. It became like at the top of the bestseller charts, sort of say, reading at the back here, in 2006. Um, because Osama bin Laden actually quoted the book publicly to, to say, you know, if, um, sort of 
not exactly this, but in essence, if you uh, want to find out about you know how terrible the U.S. has been, go and read this book. And Williams Williams' take on that was uh, I wouldn't say positive, but it wasn't negative. It was like, oh yeah, that was pretty cool that Osama bin Laden uh, suggested that you know you guys should read this because yeah, it tells you the the truth of it, and he actually took it away as a almost. Semi-positive state, I guess. Um, I didn't know really what to think about that. Kind of at the beginning, I was like, oh, this seems like a bit of an odd individual. Um, but then, you know, trying to think of it broadly, you know, perhaps it is a good thing because people do read it. Um, I don't know. I, I really don't know what to say about this book. The, the, the final thing I will say about this book was uh, what I really didn't enjoy about this book was that a lot of the information that's presented, again, because it's just a lot of truth presentation, a lot of facts, you'll actually find pages and pages, and I'm going to find like an example of this, where let's say chapter three, when it talks about assassinations, right? And he, they'll actually go through, William actually puts down, here's the following is a list of prominent foreign individuals whose assassination or planning for, same, the United States have been involved in the end, in, since the end of Second World War. And then what follows is basically, and I'm going to put this up to um, the screen for the individuals who are seeing this um, on the video, but if not, I'll explain it through. It's two or three pages of basically just names against dates. So 1961, Francois Papadou. Uh, 1967, Fidel Castro. 1967, Che Guevara. Uh, all the way through to 2003, Saddam Hussein. So the book will often do this where it'll just go and try and present facts about the, the terrible things that the USA has done in terms of assassinations or in terms of chemical and biological weapons abroad. But it will just go on and on and on and on and on. In fact, there's a pay, there's a part, I'm just going to make sure I get the, the right pages here as well. Uh, there's the, the United States versus the world, the United Nations. This was a bit of a conversational uh, chapter around where was the times that the US was actually against the UN uh, in terms of uh, voting. And there is legitimately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 pages where it's essentially just listing out date, uh, time, and the vote ratio between the UN and the US against a particular uh I guess the title of the conversation, such as Declaration on the Right to Development, cooperation between the UN and the League of Arab States, and just the fact that US was against, you know, the UN. And it just lacks, it lacks so much information, uh, so much context to this thing, but it just tries to present like all these facts, essentially like 400 times that the US has done that. It's like, cool, thanks for presenting that. Um, but if you really wanted to understand fully, you know, why either one, you're gonna have the most massive book ever, or you better be prepared to actually summarize and probably put some explanations as to why that might have happened and try to present the both parts. So um, look, overall, I give this book a six out of 10 um, because I'm not going to, I'm not going to hate it in the way that it was presented. I, I, as a, me as an individual, I didn't enjoy reading this fully. I skipped obviously those sections where it's 20 pages of just individual stated facts. I'm not going to go into each one. I'm also going to read it. I got the whole context of the book to actually say, Hey, with a lens back onto the USA, look at the many things that they have done terribly. 100%, I agree. Uh, but I would also say, um, probably do that to any country you want to as well. And you'll probably find there's a lot of terrible things each country has done uh, to other people and to themselves. Is, there, is anyone really to be spared? Probably not. Would you also label the entire country, every individual in that country, via the way that perhaps a couple of people have behaved and you know, as operating as the USA? Not really. So um, the, there was there was versions of this that, for this book that I just felt challenged by. I really enjoyed the fact that it presented all of these facts, um, that it, it got published. You know, there's a lot of information here which tends to not get shared. So it is good that that sort of information is shared, but it could have done a better job, I believe, in trying to sway and convey the information that was pre presented. So uh, facts alone don't make a good book um, and it could have probably been a little bit better. However, if you do want to get your hands on, on Rogue State and actually read and see for yourself what that information is, I would recommend you reading it. Um, I wouldn't recommend you uh, listening to a version of this because you're going to have a ton load of points where you're just like, I just want to skip 30 pages here. Um, and there's a lot of other sections where it's not repeated, but it just talks about a lot of different ways that the US has acted in different countries. Um, but a quick read might be a good one to just get your, your head in check if you believe that the, the US is just the... The good, the good superpower doing good things for everybody. Um, so at least for that, it would give you a great check. And that's all, me and Mortal Lines for today. That was Rogue State by William Blum. 
Um, if you have read it, let me know what you thought of the book. Obviously, I'd be super interested to understand if you really enjoyed it, if you saw it from that extreme and you really supported your view, or if you were super challenged by it and you thought, nah, William got it all wrong, or at least could have presented it better. I would be very interested. Now, again, we are a value for value enabled podcast as well here at the book review. So if you want to drop me a boostergram as well, so I can read out um, some of the boostergrams, we can also pass it on to Karen as he does his monthly reviews and we'll read it out then. Always would appreciate it. But for now, me and Mortalites, I hope you are well, wherever you are in the world. One out.